Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking you along with me while I make over my formal dining room with a beautiful new paint color. I did a couple other things in this video, like making over a Facebook Marketplace find dining set that is completely solid wood, and I did it with a no sanding gel stain technique that I think you guys are going to really love and want to try. And I also made over an estate sale find, which was this vintage mirror right here. I'm going for all of the French cottage French country looks here in this room. We use it mostly for playing board games and having family time but I also will be able to host family in here for holidays and I cannot wait to decorate this room for different holidays now that it's finished. So let's get started and I'll show you how I did this amazing transformation. Starting out, this room used to be my office and I did all my DIY crafts in here and I had my dream box in here as well. I have a video of that makeover when I turned it into my office, but this room is just primer white and the stuff I'm putting in it is beautiful, has tons of potential, but it really needs to be like leveled up. And so I'm going to base my design off of that curtain there on the right with the peacock design in it. So I ordered some samples of three different greens from Claire Paint and I ended up going with the one on the bottom which is called All the Sage. It's actually one of their newer colors and Claire sent me the paint for this video today. I've been working with them for years now. They are a no VOC company. I am not getting paid to tell you this, although they did send me the paint, and I would not get paid if any of you guys decided to buy it yourselves. So this is my true opinion. I really do love them. I actually use their paint all the time. Over the years, I have started to become allergic to most paint smells, as well as anything oil-based. So I have to use zero VOC paint, and Claire Paint actually makes it really easy because their colors are awesome they already know what sheen to put everything in for you and you can order it online and have it delivered straight to you so that's a huge plus for me because I have four young children that I don't want to have to lug to the store to get all the paint supplies but my husband and I emptied out all this room and my dogs are there to help I swear Piper is my shadow she's my soul dog and she goes anywhere I go you'll see her in tons of my YouTube videos but once I get everything out of this room then I need to prep the walls for paint if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would introduce yourself down in the comment section so that I can say hi and get to know you. We have a great community here full of tons of positive people who are encouraging and we just want to do creative things. And so I'm glad you're here today and if you love being creative with home decor and flipping furniture and thrifting, then hit subscribe down below. A quick hack that I like using is using caulking to fill in any kind of holes that are in the wall and you just stamp it with your fingers to create a texture look just like the wall. Now that everything is out of the room, it is time to get my paint set up and get these walls painted. I'm so excited about this room being painted. I've been waiting so long to really make a decision about what color I wanted to put in here. And I could not for the life of me figure out if I wanted blue or taupe or light tan or if I wanted some kind of green. I know green is all the rage right now, which is funny because the color is called all the sage. But... I didn't know if I was a green person and I still don't really consider myself a green person. I prefer blue more than any other color and I actually like how blue and white look and so I had originally planned to do the walls in blue but then I thought my blue and white items will kind of blend in too much with a blue color so then I decided to go with a sage green and when I discovered those curtains I actually bought them at a Tuesday morning store so they are no longer available since Tuesday morning has closed down um, I fell in love with them and I started loving that light green color with all my blue and white and when I was looking for a color to paint this room I kind of didn't know if I wanted to go really bold with like a chartreuse type of color or if I wanted to stick with more of that French country light and airy type of look and so I actually sent pictures of all the samples to everybody in my family and asked them which color I should do because I couldn't decide I don't know why I had such um, like decision paralysis <laughs> but I really did Something that I do differently than many other people is I don't tape off when I paint because I prefer to use an angled brush and do it by hand. For me personally, this saves me tons of time and I actually have a better looking product in the end because I don't know if I'm just terrible at applying tape correctly or if there's just no paint tape that's perfect. 
but every time I use painter's tape, you always I always get those bleeders that come through. And when I do it by hand and edge everything in with an angled brush, I never have that issue. And if, of course, I accidentally went in a spot I wasn't supposed to paint, I usually have baby wipes nearby to wipe off any paint that I messed up. And luckily, I didn't really have to do that at all for this room. And I am somebody who has an ADHD type brain. And it was really difficult for me to keep my brain on track doing all the edging right here specifically. I'm looking back at this video and remembering exactly how I was thinking was, don't get off track, don't get off track. <laughs> I really wanted to just put the paintbrush down and go grab the roller and start rolling it because I was dying to see it, how it would look on the whole wall. It was like this huge like leading up thing where I was so worried, is this the right color or not? And I just wanted to see it on the wall and I did not let myself get distracted this time. And I did all of the edging in the room without stopping to be distracted by anything or changing my plan, which for me is a really big deal. Let me know in the comments if you have the same problem that I do with sticking to doing things in the right order, the right steps without getting bored and changing and, and start mixing it all up. But since I did do it in the right order, which is edging and then rolling and then doing a second coat, it got done really quickly. I was shocked at how fast I painted this room. It took me less than half a day to do two full coats, edging and everything, had the whole room done and the rest of the half a day to just rest and relax. <laughs> it's amazing how a coat of paint can make such a huge difference. And I only used a half a gallon of paint for this whole room. Although we do have pretty big windows and big doorways and things, but still I was amazed. I got two full coats of paint on the walls in this room with less than a gallon of paint. Wow, talk about an affordable makeover. <laughs> Usually, uh, it used to be back in the day when you would watch shows on HDTV like uh, Trading Spaces or whatever, they would say $20 and you can completely change your room. Well, that's really the case because I only used half a gallon here. And <laughs> so that's pretty close to almost $20 changing an entire room. I'm amazed by that. I, I think that I'm going to probably use this paint, the rest of it, on a furniture project in the future. On this back wall here, I love the molding that there is originally here, but for some reason they didn't carry it through the rest of the room. And of course they no longer make this molding in this style, at least I cannot find it. I had originally planned to do all white on that molding to do a chair molding all the way around the room, but our ceilings are actually quite low in this house. We have an older home, it's a very historic style. And so I thought if I did that, it would make the room appear even shorter. So I decided to paint from floor to ceiling with all one green color.
I've got the first coat done and dry. It's really hard for me to capture its beautiful essence in this video because of that huge hutch in the center of the room. But I'm going to need to go over it with a second coat just because there's some spots that I accidentally rolled a little bit too light. And I just really want to make sure I have good full coverage on here. Once everything was dry, I went back and put on all the switch plates and the plug plates, and then I get to put all the furniture back in the room. This is my favorite part by far, although I do love seeing when the paint gets rolled on. Man, that is so satisfying. Do you guys remember when I did a makeover on this chair? I have the video in the description box down below if you want to check it out, but this to me is the perfect spot for it, and I got this pillow at an estate sale, and it goes perfectly. For the hutch, I thrifted this Wedgwood Vintage China set. It's just a partial set. I don't have the large plates, just like the smaller plates and bowls. But I thought that it would be beautiful for right now because it's spring and summertime. And my decor for spring and summer is usually very uh, bright and colorful, lots of blues and greens. And the pots that I have going up here, the chinoiserie vases, whatever you want to call them, they're all thrifted and secondhand from yard sales. And I got the really big one from uh, an antique market back in Arizona. Some of these plates are from Home Goods. That green one right there is an antique from the 1800s. And the one in front of it I got at a random thrift store. A lot of the stuff that I'm putting into this gigantic hutch is thrifted and secondhand. I actually bought this hutch from my friend's parents because I always loved it in their home and they went to sell it and I was like, no way I need this. <laughs> Don't sell it to anybody but me. And so I'm just going to play around with how I'm arranging everything in here to get it to a point to where I actually love it. Sometimes less is more, by the way. The next thing that I'm going to do is make over this dining table. As of now, this is the first dining table that has been in this room and it is really gross and dirty. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace for I think 120 bucks, but it's one of those really solid wood pine sets that are usually made in Mexico, but I feel like I can make this look right like the rustic French country versus the rustic southwest look that it was probably originally created for and I'm going to do that by adding on a gel stain. This is the Dixie Belle one uh, in walnut. The wood was already really orange and so to tone down the orange I'm using walnut because walnut is a cool tone wood stain. So by covering that warm tone with a cool tone it's going to kind of neutralize it and become a neutral wood tone. The reason I'm using gel stain is because I didn't want to have to sand this entire table down and chairs. I hate sanding chairs. I'm sure you guys can agree that that is like the worst activity to ever do in the history of the world. <laughs> and so I'm going over the finish with the gel stain. And you can do that with lots of different pieces of furniture without sanding. You can just go right over it with gel stain. If your surface is kind of slick, you're going to need more coats and to, be, to have more finesse as you're applying it just so that it doesn't wipe off too easily. But this surface was a bit dry. They had it sealed with some type of oil, so it wasn't completely raw wood, but it did go on really, really well and really evenly. I used a microfiber cloth to do it. But let me just say that this stain stinks really, really bad. Like I was telling you earlier, I am allergic to paint smells and stain smells. And since this was Dixie Belle, I thought that it was going to not be that way because a lot of their products are no VOC or low VOC. And I didn't even think twice to check, but I had started working on it and it stunk to high heavens and it made my 
nasal passages close up almost instantly and it lasted for three days that I could not breathe out of my nose because of how allergic I am to these smells. So I'm warning you guys, don't do this inside and wear a respirator. Once it, I had already started, it was kind of too late. I just had to film it as fast as I could. So you see me really applying it on fast, but that's still kind of a, a cool example for you guys that you can do something huge really quickly, like changing your entire dining set. I'm only going to show the top and how I redid the top because of the smell. I had to have my husband take it outside for me because it was giving me a really bad reaction. So he did the rest of the staining, but it's the same process for the whole piece. And all you're doing is wiping it on and then wiping off the excess. And the way that I do it the, as fast as I do is I have one half of the rag that is made for applying it and then the bottom half of the rag in the bottom of my palm is the section that does not have stain on it. So I apply it where my fingers are, wipe it off with my palm. So it goes extremely, extremely fast. And that's why I was able to do this whole top of the table in like maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna actually seal it too, but you have to wait for it to dry for quite a while. I didn't wait for the full recommended time for it to dry. I just waited until it was dry to the touch. And so all I can say is it worked for me. I don't know if it would work for everybody that way, but since I was in such a rush to seal in that smell and make sure that my kids didn't have to smell it and me being allergic had to smell it in my house, I wanted to get it done as fast as I possibly could. I'm using a water-based flat clear coat. It's also Dixie Belle because theirs is the very low or no VOC smell. And so this stuff did not stink, although the smell was still lingering from that oil-based gel stain. Uh, but I rub it on with a damp sponge. This way I can squeeze that clear coat down into all the crevices that this table had. It also uh, allows you to wipe back to a perfectly smooth finish so that you don't really need to sand between clear coats. And anytime you're doing a dining table or a coffee table, a table that's going to get beat up, you need at least three coats of a clear coat. So I did three coats of this flat on here. And I guess you could, on other pieces, you could use an oil or some other type of finish on here. You can use oil-based clear coat as well, or you can use shellac, or you could use clear enamel. There's a lot of different options out there for clear coat, but my personal preference for a table that's going to get beat up, it's going to have water on it because of drinks and food and whatnot, use a water-based polyurethane. When it's a water-based one, you won't get those water rings like you would with a shellac because shellac, if it gets water on it, turns white very, very quickly. In fact, that's one way to test what something is sealed with is if you 
spritz it with some water and it gets white spots instantly, then you know it's been sealed with shellac and most likely it's an antique if that's the case. Speaking of antiques, the next thing I'm going to work on is this mirror. It is not actually antique, but I want it to look as though it is. You can tell it's not because there's plastic here. That's why there's cracks all around that inner border because it's made of plastic. The outside has this very faux finish on it to look like an aged bra brass or gold. And in the video, as I'm watching, it looks like it looks really good. But in person, it looks very, very faux finish, very fake. And so I'm going to do that French country look on it with white paint. The color I'm picking is called buttermilk or buttercream. It's a very antique white. has a bit of yellow tones to it. And the reason I chose this over just painting it a different gold is because the wall that I'm putting it on needs some brightness. And that's something that I love to uh, talk to you guys about with home decor and design with changing colors and how do you pick your colors and all that is sometimes although you may look at this mirror and think this mirror should be gold because how beautiful would that look but you're not really looking at the big picture of it in the room in the room if it was gold it would be a little too heavy and just too much for the space that it's going to be in that side of the room needs some light and brightness so although the mirror by itself would look really pretty in gold in the room as a whole it really needed to be a light white color and in case you were wondering where i picked this up i got this at an estate sale i love going to estate sales and especially here in texas there's some really amazing stuff to be found but my trick to estate sales is i go on the day and time where everything is half off a lot of times the really amazing finds are gone, but at the same time, sometimes they're very overpriced on the first few days. So people leave the good stuff and then when it's half off, you get the really amazing deals on the stuff that you wanted on the first day. And I never tape anything off, you know that, I already said that. And, and for glass especially, it is so easy to get paint off of glass and mirrors and it doesn't scratch or anything. You just take a flat razor blade and scrape it right off. It comes off so easily and it's actually kind of fun to do. It's like one of those fun, relaxing <laughs> projects to do. My husband came in and put in an anchor on the wall because this mirror is actually really heavy and I had a baby on my hip at the time so I couldn't do this part but the room is finished now. This is what we were starting with. It wasn't horrible. There was some character there but it was very unfinished, very blah and boring and now it is this collected, relaxing, soothing color that goes well with all of my antiques. It also goes well with the historic look of our home, the style that we have with all the beautiful moldings. They stand out now because this calming green color is the background. It also looks amazing with the outside nature because I feel like I'm bringing nature inside and making our home fit in better with its surroundings. Look at the huge difference that a coat of paint made and the dining table. It looks so good in here. I was worried it was going to be too dark, but it looks gorgeous. It really appears to me to be a French farmhouse style table. I added a gingham striped table runner here and a bread bowl with some decor inside there. The chairs look aged and old and have tons of character even though they're really not that old and this table was made at Pier 1. Speaking of Pier 1, these are my grandma's chairs that she bought from Pier 1 a long time ago, probably 20 years ago, and I added on a Walmart cushion on there and I feel like I finally have a place to showcase my grandma's pieces of furniture in here. It plays well with the mirror on the wall. Here is what I mean about that mirror bringing lightness to this side of the room and it has such a fun crackly finish on there. I didn't put a clear coat over the chalk paint and I wanted it to appear old and flat and, and just aged, you know. So it, it helps to illuminate the room on that side because of course on this side we have this massive bay window. We actually got shutters installed and the reason it took me so long to get this video out to you guys is because I was waiting on them to get installed. I'm not sponsored in any way for this. This is something that we saved up and paid for and it was not cheap. Wish I didn't have to, but it, it holds the heat out. We have old windows that are single pane. Like I said, we have a very old home. So we needed something that was gonna go with the age and style of the home, but also work for modern convenience. Here's how it all looks now. 
with the shutters closed. The room has come together so well. I'm going to find as much decor as I can on Amazon that is similar to what I use in this room. I did get these blue curtains on Amazon and I'll try and find some similar to these curtains which were the jumping off point for my entire design for this room. That's how beautiful they are. So I'm going to try and find some for you guys on Amazon if I can and any other decor that I think would go. I'm going to eventually put in a curio cabinet right here. I already bought it from an estate sale. I just need to fix it because it is falling apart. You guys remember when I made this. I can link that video down below as well. But please leave a comment and let me know what was your favorite part of this makeover for the dining room. And thank you so much to Claire Paint for sending me the paint for this room to make this makeover possible. I'll have their link in the description box down below. If you liked what you saw in today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because I do stuff like this all the time here on my channel. And I have so many more projects lined up for you all. Thanks for watching. Bye!